Marianne Williamson has formed an exploratory committee for a possible 2024 presidential run. On her recent interview with The Vanguard, she was asked about her willingness to employ what is called a dirty break strategy in a Democratic primary. So what the dirty break strategy is, for those who don't know, you run in the primaries as a Democrat to get notoriety, to get media, to get votes. And then should you lose the primary, you do not fall in line and endorse the Democrat for November. You instead break off a dirty break and run as either an independent or if you can find a third party that will put you on their ticket, you do that. So it's, a, it's like a dirty Sanchez, but more political. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Our great friends over at the Vanguard uh, asked her about this. And here's what she had to say. Wondering if you would have any interest in pursuing a strategy known as a dirty break, which is if, you know, your uh, attempt to secure the nomination is unsuccessful thanks to their efforts to rig it or to treat you unfairly. Um, is there any chance you would then pursue uh, a, a third party challenge after the primary ends, you know, continue this resistance to the corporate duopoly from with from outside of it? When they were. Republican uh, debates were happening, I think, in, two, yeah, in 2016. And all those Republicans were up on the debate stage. One of the uh, moderators said to Donald Trump, well, if you don't win the nomination, will you still support the Republican nominee? And you might remember what his response was. It was, depends on how you treat me. Right. And in retrospect, I think that's the right answer. All right. So. This is where things get really meta, kind of ridiculously meta here. Um, Brianna Joy Gray on a podcast brought up the idea of Marianne Williamson running, and she seems on board with it. So she brought up to her sort of guest panel there, uh, which included Shama Sawant and Shahid Buttar. Um, she brought up the fact that Marianne endorsed the dirty break strategy. She says that Marianne is willing to do a dirty break. Revolutionary Blackout Network took issue with her categorization of that, and the Vanguard then took issue with their categorization of her statement. So I have to play this because this is actually the most concise way to cover this. I do acknowledge the ridiculousness of commenting on a video where the Vanguard comments on a video where Revolutionary Blackout Network comments on a video. It's like we're, four we're, inceptions we're, we're of meta coverage. In, we're drifting into Velma territory. Here. <laughs> exactly. It's like there's going to be an extended meta joke. Yeah. Exactly. But believe me, there's a method to my madness. There's a reason we have to play this because I think. It is worth debating not only their response, but obviously the issue of a potential Marianne 2024 run. So let's play this, see if you can keep up. I apologize for how complicated. So Marianne has said, she said in this Vanguard interview that she would do a dirty break. That's a bold face lie. <laughs> That's a bold face lie. She did not say that whatsoever. She literally Remember, I'll bring it up in just a second. that moment. And Marianne was like, it depends on how the party treats me. If they treat me well, then I will abandon the movement and support the Democratic Party. To me, when I when I reacted to that moment, that was our last live stream, I literally said that was one of the worst answers she could have gave. Literally one of the worst answers she possibly gave about that. <laughs> if he said, if the Democratic Party that we know is corrupt, that we know is imperialist, that we know is capitalist, that we know is horrible on human life. If they just nice to me, then I tell you vote for them. You got these. And it's not about it's not about being nice to her. The point she was making, and the point I was making, is that if they treat you unfairly, if they rig the process against you and the movement you represent, then you threaten to break away and run third party. That's the strategy. I think everyone understands that. It's not just about her personal fee fees or some you know petty bullshit like that. Like. Obviously, that's a mischaracterization of what Marianne Williamson was saying. And also, she was saying that she was going to wait until she had explicit evidence of the wrongdoings that they had done, which was surely going to emerge, right? Like, it, 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 she's not an idiot, guys. She's a super smart woman. She uh, she, she understands they're going to fuck her over. Of course they are. That's why she, she said that she was, you know, considering, oh, how, how will they treat me? 
it's a matter of she is, hasn't abandoned the idea of winning over any Democratic voters because she actually wants to, like, make a difference. OK, lot to unpack there. The Revolutionary Blackout Network guys took some heat for saying that she lied. Right. They were they were harsh. They said, you know, she told a bold face lie. I always thought it was bald face lie, not bold face lie. But apparently I looked it up and actually apparently it is acceptable to say both. I didn't know that. Um, but they are correct. The RBN guys are correct that Brianna Joy Gray did miscategorize what Marianne Williamson said, because as we saw in the previous clip, Marianne Williamson did not commit to a dirty break. A dirty break means you run as a third party or as an independent if you lose the primary, not if they treat you unfairly. And that's the distinction that Bree and the Vanguard boys miss here, right? When Zach says, oh, well, when she produces evidence of foul play, which no doubt she will. No, you're wrong yeah. about that, my man. You're wrong about that. You're not going to find any evidence of foul play because there's not going to be any foul play. You know why there's not going to be any foul play? Because, because Marianne not Williamson get is not going to get within 90 points of Joe Biden in a Democratic primary. They're not going to have to screw her over. They would if they had to, but there's not. they are not going to have to because Democratic primary voters are so fucking dumb they are guaranteed 100 percent to fall in lockstep behind joe biden in a primary and if you thought what the media did to bernie sanders was bad wait till marianne williamson announces she's gonna primary a sitting democratic president there is absolutely zero chance in hell that she gets anywhere near joe biden they're talking about, oh, I'm going to ask, I'm going to make Joe Biden debate me. He's not going to debate you. You're not entitled to a debate just because you run for president. What if I say I'm running against Joe Biden? Does he have to debate me? No. If he's polling 90, point, 90 points out in front of you, he don't have to debate you and he's not going to. And you don't have a credible claim that they rigged it against you just because you couldn't get a debate with a candidate who's blowing you out by literally 80 to 90 points. So this is the main point of confusion here. A lot of progressives have it in their head that corporate Democrats can't beat progressive Democrats without cheating, and that's not true. That's not to say they wouldn't cheat if they had to, but it's not true. They very often can beat progressive Democrats without cheating. Why? Because as I've been saying for four years, Democratic Party primary voters are fucking dumb. They like Adam Schiff. They like Joe Biden. We just did a segment on Adam Schiff earlier. Why do you think he yeah, sent out yeah, six yeah, fundraising see, emails? You see that? They kick him off the intelligence service. You know what it's like? It's like Star Wars. You strike <laughs> me down, I'm just going to be more powerful in the Senate. Exactly. I'll show you. <laughs> exactly. This is the level of idiocy you're dealing with in a Democratic primary, which is why Marianne Williamson has no chance. And so for her to say... For her to quote Donald Trump and say, hey, I think it's a good idea when Trump said, well, it depends on how you treat me. I'll run third party if you treat me badly. She is making a vague commitment. It's nowhere near a promise, but she's making a vague commitment there to perhaps run as an independent if she is cheated in some way. But that's not an actual commitment to a dirty break. A dirty break doesn't have anything to do with being cheated. A dirty break means I'm going to use this party to get my name out there and to get some money in my uh, campaign coffers. And then when I lose, I run as an independent, whether there were shenanigans or not. That's what a dirty break is. That is absolutely not what she committed to. And so the RBN guys, yes, they got, they took it some heat for calling her a liar because I, I, I will admit that's a bit of a harsh thing to say. I don't think Bree was lying, but they were right on the substance of that point. It is bullshit to say that she has committed to a dirty break strategy. She absolutely has not. And so that's where I think you have to rule on that. I think what Brianna Joy Gray's problem is, and it's a problem that I totally understand, I totally empathize with, I think she, as a veteran of two Sanders campaigns, is very frustrated and she hates 
the fact that she keeps having to eat shit and lose to these corporate Democrats. She seems desperate to beat them, which is why she gets into arguments with Chris Hedges when he starts saying, no, you have to go third party route. She had Shama Sawant uh, on a panel with Chris Hedges. I think this was a year or two back where they had this similar argument, where she was very frustrated that they had no faith in a Democrat's ability to successfully primary out someone like Joe Biden. She wants to win. Well, I understand why, she why wants she, to win. Why would she think that? I mean, she I think she just wants to win. Inside. I think yeah. she wants to win. I think she feels like she can do it. I think she really wants it. And I empathize with that. I get that. All right. If I gave years of my life working for the Sanders campaign, I might still be clinging to that hope myself. But looking at it from 30,000 feet, man, the idea that Marianne Williamson is going to primary Joe Biden is a joke. It's a of joke. Of course. Of course. And of so course. what are we even talking about? The only way you even begin to consider supporting Marianne's candidacy is if she promises a dirty break, whether they treat her fairly or not. She says, look, I'm running as a Democrat to get some eyeballs on me. If and when I lose, I will run as an independent. I will not bend the knee. Okay, fine. Then you begin to vet her as a candidate to see if she's even someone who you want to back, right? Um, and that's a whole different set of sort of issues there. But that's the only way you even begin to have that conversation. Absent that, it's it's a non-starter. It's not serious. It is not serious. She is not coming close to Joe Biden in a Democratic primary and they are not going to have to employ the kind of shenanigans that she says it would take for her to make a dirty break. They're not going to have to do any of that. She's going to be an afterthought. She's an afterthought already. There was a, a poll out of New Hampshire, New Hampshire Democratic primary voters, which oddly enough, Biden was not leading. Pete Buttigieg was leading well, at 23 not, points. Aren't, aren't they not starting in New Hampshire anymore? No, yeah, they're not the first state. It's going to be South Carolina now. But they took that poll, right? Pete Buttigieg was in the lead at 23 points. Biden and Warren were tied for second <laughs> at 18. Sanders was third at 15. Okay? Now, let's just game this out here. Okay? If this was when, – when was this poll done? Recent. Recent. Okay. All right. If Biden runs, Pete's not running. He's out. Pete is not going to primary his boss. He knows how bad that would look. He knows the shit libs would never forgive you. Oh, you're, you're disloyal. So forget it. He's out if Biden's in. All right. Warren has already said she's out if Biden's in. And Sanders has already said he's out if Biden's in. So you have 23, 18. What is that? 41 plus another 18. That's 59 plus Sanders is 15. So you're talking about almost a 75% majority right there, just in candidates who would drop out and back Biden. Marianne Williamson was not even in that poll. She's not even an afterthought. She's not even an afterthought now. You think when she sticks her head in the race to primary an incumbent president, MSNBC, you, you like I said, man, you thought they were mean to Bernie? You ain't seen nothing yet. If Marianne well, tries got, to unseat Joe Biden. Well, it, it, as, as soon as she announces, you're going to get all of those pictures where they just freeze frame her like this. <laughs> right, exactly. Crazy Marianne Williamson's disturbing past comments about peyote use. Right. <laughs> it's just going to be that 24 hours a day. Uh, but then again, actually, Sanders, uh, you said it on one of the shows that we did recently, a real black pill monologue you went on about how Sanders was a once in a lifetime thing. And it is, you know, Marianne Williamson, when I hear this, okay, so we're back to the pre Sanders era where you have that one candidate who is, has no chance of winning so they can tell the truth and they get like, you know, 6%. That's right. what she'll be. Right. That's it. It's not going to be a Sanders thing uh, for, and part of the reason for that is too much of the Sanders movement is done with electoral right. politics. Right. They're, those people are not available for a campaign like that, um, especially one that is much more quixotic than Sanders's was. The first time there was this, holy crap, could this guy actually win? And it just snowballed. The second time it was more serious, like, yeah, this guy could really win. Williamson, like, who's going to who's gonna waste their time? Especially after having had that experience. Please clap.